Hi, sweetie. How are you doing? Welcome to Mara Sim, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So I came across a video done by a man who actually came out to make jokes out of Sonia Massey's death, right? It's been weeks since Sonia Massey passed, and uh, I know it's really been a very hard time for Black community, and making jokes out of somebody's, someone's death is the least Black people expected from anybody, right? So this man came out to tell us that, uh, I mean, like, you know, we all can see what happened to Sonia Massey, that this is also a very good time for us not to vote for Kamala Harris and vote for the other party. I mean, using somebody's death, right? Black people did not find that funny. They called him out. And this man doubled down, tripled down to show us books, right, that he has read. I mean, black books that he has read. Even the books that he brought out, he did not even finish them. Because why would somebody come out to make jokes out of nothing? Now, the problem is that some people feel like we are not human, black people are not humans enough. One of the reasons why they treat them the way they treat them. Now, the best you all can do is uh, when black people are going through a phase, shut the hell up, right? You don't have to, you must not insult yourself in every conversation. Let people have their, let people do their thing. Let them talk about what is going on in their com community instead of coming out to make jokes. I mean, this is just one of the dumb videos you see on the internet. Let's get into this. Let's get into all right, y'all, welcome to Controversy Review, where we review TikTok's best controversies. Today, we're going to be talking about Moschino Dorito. I just call him the leftist Lorax, what he did, how he responded to the backlash, what he could have done better. And at the end, we're going to rate the whole thing one through 10. I'm renowned internet pariah BRS. Let's get right to it. So basically, he was talking about the unfortunate passing of Sonia Massey, but using it as an example of why people should not vote blue, which risky business. And also, he didn't even say her name. And it's like, come on, bro, we literally have chance about that. And then he responded to the backlash by showing us that he knows his way around a Barnes & Noble or two, reading us this book by a black author. However, in the video, he admits to the fact that he didn't even finish the book. So he's already getting the LeBron allegations. But after he's getting backlash from this, he's like, gosh, you know, this one book, it really got him upset. I need to show him another book. So he showed us a different book. So he pulled out this one. He was like, this one will show him. And it did not show anybody. Everyone's still very mad at him. And as of recording this, that's been his latest post. And it was like three days ago. So how did he handle this? Absolutely horribly. For one, when black people are struggling with anything, the last thing they want to see is a white face. And last time I checked, you got one of those. Not only do you have a white face, but you're also making a call to action. We don't want to hear a white call to action right now. And regardless of whether it's Kamala Harris or not, regardless of what she's done, in 2024, telling people to not vote blue is borderline illegal. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you should have handled the backlash. Now, what's my qualifications for this? I've had five failed cancellation attempts, okay? <laughs> they don't even get close. I don't even lose followers. But you, Mr. Dorito, went from 1.3 to 1.2. When you have a video that's getting a lot of backlash, the most important thing to ask yourself is, can this get my account taken down? Yes or no? And the answer to the question in this case is probably not. Now, a lot of people would tell you just apologize. And to that, I say that is ridiculous. Never apologize even when you know you're wrong because they'll just remember you being wrong the first time and they'll be so mad about that they won't care that you apologize. You can ask you all about that. But since you're a constant in danger, you honestly don't really have to worry about doing that. Now, you're probably thinking that these people are being ridiculous right now, that they're insane for being this mad at you about this thing. And I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that sentiment because honestly, I just don't care about the whole situation because I'm so cool and edgy. But anyways, you don't respond to ridiculousness with serious attempts. You don't try to rationalize with people on the internet who are notorious for being irrational. Now, again, I'm not saying they're irrational. You're thinking they're irrational, and that's what's important here. What you want to do is respond with jokes that half the people are going to understand are jokes, and half the people are going to think you're being so serious. One of my personal favorite methods is the fake apology, okay? You could have got on there and been like, yo, guys, I'm, you know, I've seen all the backlash from my video, and I'm, and I just really like to apologize. It's just, I really, I really hate the police, and I let my hate for the police blind me from the fact that. It wasn't the right time to hate the police. We were supposed to hate different police. Pretend to miss the point. At the very least, it'll give you a laugh and make you feel better. The thing is, since you're a constant in danger, you can really toy with these people until it gets stale. But one thing you did that was very wrong is you stopped posting. No, never stop posting, because now when you come back, they're going to remember that you were the guy who did this thing they're mad at. If you keep posting like everything's normal when you're going through a scandal, yes, your comments are going to be flooded. Yes, your ratios are going to be horrible. But there's going to be a point in time, usually it's one to two weeks down the line, where people are going to be like, you know, I'm kind of kind of ridiculous for hate commenting in this person's comment section. I think I'm just going to leave them alone now. And then everyone forgets. It's like it never happened. But if you need the scandal to end immediately for some reason, like in one or two days, why well, I tell you I have the perfect method. And this is like the secret of sauce. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Whenever I'm done with a scandal and I'm just like annoyed, like I'm tired of seeing the comments, I compare myself to Jesus. 
and that always gets them to stop. Because when I get on here and say something like, oh, y'all are bashing me just like y'all bash Jesus and y'all love him now, blah, blah, blah. People are like, oh, he's too far gone. There's no point in saying anything to him. And that's how you get out of scandal, okay? Making people believe that there's no point in saying anything to you, whether that be because so much time has passed or because it just won't get through. Now, mind you, I'm not on your team, Mr. Dorito. You stay over there. However, whenever I see a fellow TikToker in a scandal, I'm like, oh, poor baby. They're probably scared. They don't know what to do. So I want to help you out a little bit. Now for the ratings, okay? Now how he handled it, probably like, like a two out of 10, one to two out of 10, horrible job. As for the controversy itself, I'd say probably like, like a six or seven out of 10, but only because it's race related. Like if it wasn't race related, it would probably be a four or five. Because the thing is like, like I said, I cannot bring myself to care about this. Because it's just like, I was never coming to him for political guidance. You know, like cis white male has a bad take. Like, oh, someone called the press is like, who can But anyways, the response videos to it are kind of funny, you know, and people are, they're kind of being informative in the response videos too. So it's decent, like six to seven. You know, a lot of what I do, a lot of people call it anger. They say I'm angry. I'm the angry black man. I said fit the stereotype of the angry black man. To which I always say, if you are looking and paying very close attention to shit and you're not pissed, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I genuinely don't know how to convey anything to you. Now, you are looking at a gentleman. I I'm not even going to try to pronounce his fucking name because I really don't give a fuck. OK. This guy here. This guy right here, he decided to make a correlation between Sonia Massey, the murder of Sonia Massey, and Kamala Harris. Because America only has the attention span enough to talk shit about black women. They, they don't have the attention span to do any goddamn thing else. But he used the death of Sonia Massey to try to make a point about Vice President Harris's days as a prosecutor. No. 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 We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to allow you to do it. Nor are we going to allow you to make content off of doing just that. We're not going to do it. Nope. 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 Spoke about this the other day, but apparently I need to update it. I need to update it. Here is the sad fact about Americans. All right. Americans enjoy lying to themselves. They have turned it into a sport. Who can say some shit and then we pretend like they didn't say it? Our paid for news media is very good at this while the entirety of the building is on fire they will tell you that it is a both sides thing fuck the fact that there is a raging goddamn fire in the building let's talk about both sides of this fire our national news media has done this social media has done this has and in that social media there is a nasty underbelly a very disgusting underbelly when it comes to things like the murder of Sonia Massey and the campaign of Vice President Kamala Harris. Right? You see, in America, black folks can play the black folks can play your boogeymen, but we can never be your victims. You can dance around why we are your boogeyman, but you can never address why we can't be your victims. We can't. There has to be a direct line. Now, both political parties are dog shit. I now have a video that is under review for some ungodly reason where I tell some swarmy, smart ass white man, please stop telling us some shit we can see with our own two eyes and listen and hear with our own two fucking ears, please. We know both political parties don't give a fuck about us. So bringing up the racism of LBJ, bitch, you might as well have just started at, at uh, Washington and worked, made your way to Obama. We know this already. We know Democrats and Republicans do not like us. But even in that, even in that, Black folks can serve one of two 
motherfucking purposes. One, they're going to deny up and down. The other one, they have no problem with because it sells ads, it sells merch, it sells politicians getting into the White House and in the, in the seats of power. We have to be your boogeyman. We have to be. You got to be. But we can never be your victims. Mm. If there is some victimhood amongst us, it's a mentality. It's not based on any factual information. It's just what we think. It's our gut instinct to not be victims. And then you get this guy who will take the murder of Sonia Massey to talk about all the cool uh, uh, black power books he's read. Not because he gives a fuck about Sonia Massey, but because it looks really good to be that ally. That word that I hate so utterly much. Because white allies have to have us as the boogeyman. That way they have something to fight against. Look at me, look at me. I'm fighting against the stereotype that black people are, are harmful and dangerous. There is no heart in it. There's no meaning in it. There's no soul in it. None. It is simply done for clicks and fucking views. No different than what the fucking American news media does. No different. And to think that this motherfucker used Sonia Massey's death to then, in turn, literally, the next video over say, but we got to vote for the cop. We got to vote for the cop. You are asking us to not make the best of a shitty situation. To not have any level of hope whatsoever. ever. And mind you, both political parties are dog shit. And they have never really known what to do with black folks. They haven't. I love how we're told that we're wrong for voting for somebody because of the color of their skin, even though that's been the fucking modus operandi of the political uh, 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 apparatus in this country since buckle shoes and powdered wigs. White men voting for white men so they can keep more white manness. It was cool when they did it. It's a problem when we do it. Though. And we know Democrats and Republicans don't like us. We know this. But we also know when something as heinous as the death of a black woman happens, that's not the time for you to bring up your fucking ally bona fides. You're going to get kicked in the nuts for saying that shit. You're going to get kicked in the face for even bringing it up. We can focus on the fact that Sonia Massey is dead and was murdered. We also can focus on the fact that, oh shit, we have to actually have a chance to change something, to make the death of a person like Sonia Massey mean something by electing a black woman to be president of the United States. But please don't let our reality uh, 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 stop you from your allyship. Go to his page. Go to his fucking page. Look at his videos. He made a video exploiting the death of Sonia Massey to then in turn use that same fucking exploitation to shit on Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, and then to tell us, oh, look at all the cool black books I wrote, read by black authors. You didn't, it didn't register with you at all. You might as well have been reading a goddamn uh, a nutritional value of Bisquick while you're taking his shit. Because if any of the shit that you read meant anything, there's no motherfucking way in hell you'd have made either one of them goddamn videos. There would have been no motherfucking way you'd have made either one of those goddamn videos. You damn sure wouldn't be using a black woman's death as exploitation. You damn sure wouldn't be talking shit about a black woman who is running to save us from something as, uh, as heinous as Agenda 47, which is going to touch your stupid ass. And you would not have tried to compare the fucking two. Oh, and by the way, here's some books by Black Panthers I read, and you got nothing out of it. Nothing. You were an ally, dog. And that's a slur around these parts. A fucking slur. It's a title you gave yourself, and you want us to recognize when you do something as stupid as using the death of Sonia Massey to shit 
on the vice president of the United States, a black woman. You're a fucking ally. And there's a reason I hate you motherfuckers. There's a reason I loathe you more than I even loathe fucking white racists sometimes. Because y'all will do shit like this unironically and then want us to pat you on the fucking back for being one of the good ones. The fuck do we look like, white racists? And your ass is one of them black sellouts? You got the wrong motherfucking ones. You're a goddamn idiot. The, just by you doing that shit shows that you didn't, anything in those books didn't matter to you. You were simply reading them so that other people could see you do it. Fucker. Well, hello there, Dorito. I think you look more like a Cheeto puff, though, than you do a Dorito. The round ones. They're orange and wide, like your face. I wanted to thank you, though, because instead of worrying about the extinction of you redheads that's supposed to happen in 2060, you decided to spend your money on that one-day shipping from Amazon to get those crispy, unopened books that you've never read before and explain to us black people what we needed to know. And since you did that, I want to tell you about my book that I wrote for you YT people. That's also on Amazon. It's called A Brief History of White People and Their Humble Beginnings from the Caves to the 1500s. As you can see, Cheeto, I wrote it myself. Let's crack this open and see what we got. The whites were a fearful people and thus hid in caves to avoid the elements. They made primitive scribbles they called drawings. They have never truly lost their fascination with caves, so they created spelunking. A spelunker is a person who deep dives into caves for no reason. Why do they do this? That's a question that cannot be answered with today's knowledge, but hopefully in the future, we will have the necessary tools to understand this phenomenon. White people feel at home in caves. Here's another excerpt it's about the sun and about how the dangers you faced with your skin burning when you left those caves because of the sun. Look, there's even some activities in here. Look at this. Can you find the white? Fun stuff since we're sharing books. Why don't you go in there and get you a copy, Orange Fanta, since you're using Sonya's murder to make your videos. So with those videos that you made, how much money did you get out of the creator fund? And why don't you go donate that money, since you care so fucking much, to the GoFundMe for her family that's in my bio. 10 out of fucking 10. Let me get this straight. You got your white ass on TikTok and use Sonia Massey's death in order to correlate it with why we shouldn't vote for Kamala Harris. Instead of an apology, you decide to take your white ass to Barnes and Noble and you decide to pick up a Pan-African book and a Black Panther book, okay? And you try to read Black people, their history. You and Fanita are on the same fucking drugs. Snorting fentanyl out of a wet pool noodle. You dip your blunts in lead paint. You do. The, to, to double down is insane. To keep those videos up is insane. To monetize those videos is insane. Yep, that's, that's what he did. I can't let it go. And another thing, who was the Rito bag reading that book to? You know, the book the like he ordered right out of Amazon Prime on one day shipping and didn't read it all the way because they had no creases in the book. They do. Who was he reading the book to? Because I know he wasn't reading a book about black people to black people. I know he didn't hear black people say, don't use Sonya for your political talking point. She had a life. You didn't even say her name. You just used her for some snarky joke. I know he didn't hear that and said, you know what I can do? I can read him a book about themselves. I want to believe you are as smart as your supporters say you are and that you were only responding to the critique that people had of you about who to vote for. And you were not responding to people saying, hey, you are using Sonia's name irresponsibly. And that's why a lot of black people have trouble or have reservations with receiving help outside the culture. Because a lot of people, a lot of times, will get some knowledge and think that they know everything and look down on the people that they said they were supposed to 
be working with. As someone who doesn't experience the police the way that we have, the, the least you could do is have some empathy. It's the very least that you could actually do. And use your platform wisely. You didn't even say her name. You used her death and didn't even say her name. I know Cool Ranch wasn't reading that book to us. Fake reading like LeBron. You ain't even read it. Idiotic, evil Democratic Party. Called it. I said he was going to move to the far white. I called this crash out. I haven't posted because I needed the dust to settle on you. And now you're crashing out shirtless. You've lost the Dorito-shaped plot. Performative. Had a bad take. Refused to take accountability. Became face of book talk. For the wrong reasons. And now this is like the next step to becoming like Elon and using phrases like the woke mind virus is proof positive that you are susceptible to brainwashing, period. Lost 100,000 followers in 18 hours after the first video. Learned no lesson. To the people who follow me, I promise you to never have a crash out this way. I also would hope that you would check me instantaneously, and I know that I'm able to accept feedback. So if and when, please, please. And also, I'm not going to suggest books for you to read. I'm always open to suggestions from you, though. It's not a matter of not being able to talk about sensitive topics. It's a matter of having sensitivity in the topics at which you choose to speak about. Also, in that video, you told us to think about our behavior. I want you to hear what I just said and know that's your behavior. Really take a second to think about that behavior and how your brain works and how susceptible you are to mass thinking. Who are you talking to? Like an ounce of common sense. The Moschino Dorito situation is, is definitely an example of needing to know who you are. I don't think what he said was necessarily wrong. Um, the whole like Kamala Harris is a cop thing because she is a fucking cop. I also don't believe in like shaming each other into voting for blue. Like saying that like, oh, if you don't vote for Kamala Harris, like, oh, you're going to ruin everything. She definitely needs to come out and show us what she's going to do. That's going to be so much different. But when I saw him double down with those fucking books, reading books written by black women and shit, directing it to black people, oh my goodness. Come on, bro. Come on, dog. No, no. Telling black people how they should feel about black issues as someone who isn't black is a big no-no. And then to go read books made for those black people to them as if they don't understand them. Mm-mm. Ain't nothing to do but apologize for this one, bruh. So this is all I got from those videos, fairly speaking. I mean, it's been weeks that we lost on your massive, but some people will never stop. You know, anything that got to do with black people is always where you see them have opinion. How do you come out to use somebody's death to do political campaign for the other party, right? Telling us this is also one of the reasons why we shouldn't vote for Kamala Harris and that we should vote for the other person using somebody's for somebody's death, right? The fact that a lot of people saw how this woman passed away, how the police, the part they played in her throughout the period, she was with them talking, conversing until she passed. And people still have the guts to come out to tell us that, uh, I mean, that we can get better by voting other people. I mean, are some people okay? A full grown man. Now, this is the part where I talk about humanity, how people treat people, how people talk about people's death, right? Now, the fact that when we go through something, nobody cares about it, nobody talks about it. I mean, it is only us. We are the only people that got ourselves. And this is something we should learn already. I mean, do not expect any other person to come out and fight for you. No, but the question we are actually not asking anybody to fight for us or help us do some certain things, you know. But the fact that he jumped on this, he felt like it's a joke 
or her life doesn't matter for that reason, let me jump on it. And while he jumped on it, people were like being mad at him, telling him that what he did is not okay. He decided to tell us that he know us more than we know ourselves. So he decided to bring out books, black books, reading black books to black people. I mean, can you imagine that kind of life? Okay, the book that he also did not finish. I mean, why are some people so not okay? I mean, when some people are mentally, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Oh, shit. really? I don't know why I am sad. I am sad because a woman that was with the cops and she told the cops to not hurt me right which you all saw the video circulating around you all saw the conditions surrounding her death right and all some people could do the best they could offer i mean the best they could tell us is to tell i mean like you know telling us that um we can do better by voting the other person because the person that we are planning to vote will eventually hurt us right like uh Like, for how long are we going to continue living like this? For how long are people going to think that uh, we are not, I don't know how to say it, but I am trying as much as I can to be very polite so that nothing happens to the video, right? Like, for how long are we con going to continue enduring all this bullshit? Because this is what I call bullshit, right? It's really amazing how a black person will be going through something not cool, right? Going through a hard time or a phase. And all we see is just somebody from nowhere coming to tell us how we are supposed to react and how we are supposed to do what we are supposed to do. Or using our experience or our trauma as a joke or as a caricature. I mean, right in front of our face. Not just only doing that, coming also to tell us that uh, you've read black books. So now you are telling us about the books that you read that you did not finish, that you know nothing about it to the people that own the book. I mean, this cannot, I mean, it can only get better. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.